Welcome everyone to the Google Plus Mile High Report Hangouts with Terrence Potro Pot Roast Knighton. Terrence, how are you doing, man? Doing good. How you doing? We're doing very well. We're very excited for you. Very excited for the Broncos. I am the voice of Broncos country today for the purposes of this. We want we have a lot of questions for you. The fans do. And uh, the first thing we want to say is thank you. Thank you for playing so hard for Broncos country. Thank you for doing such a, an amazing job for Broncos country. Yeah, just doing my job and uh, tell the fans to be nice. So <laughs> with the questions. <laughs> be nice with the questions. Right. All right. We'll do our best, but we're gonna have some fun. I think I think we're we're loose. It's been a long week for you. It's been a long week for some of us too. And uh, I think we're just excited to to chill on a Friday night in New York. How does that sound? Cool. Ready to go. All right. Uh, the first question I have for you is is one that I actually submitted. And <laughs> that is, what flavor Skittle? Is your favorite red, uh, green, Marshawn Lynch? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm go with red. Red's my favorite color. Um, you know, that's with any candy, Starburst, uh, jelly beans, anything. Just red. I'm gonna go red. I always go red, huh? Well, it's too bad it wasn't green. We could have taken green too because of the whole Seahawks eat the Seahawks color thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, how is your night treating you? Are the Broncos done with practice right now, or are you able to chill now? Or yeah, we usually get the night off. Um, you know, guys will be done watching film around five o'clock, and uh, usually guys will take a nap, or some guys will head out to the city. And uh, the families came in yesterday, so a lot of guys are hanging out with the kids, their wives, and uh, you know, my mom and brother came in today, so uh, I'll get a chance to see my family. Nice. That's that's got to be nice after a week without your family. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, they, they want to hang out and, you know, hang around the city and, you know, go shopping and things like that. But uh, we got to stay off our feet. I gotcha. Well, thank you again for doing this. Um, what would you say is your favorite pregame meal? Um, I keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, I have some chicken breast, the salad, um, so anything, anything that you know doesn't make me feel full. You know, you never want to be full going to a game. It kind of makes you feel sluggish and slow. So uh, you try to eat light. Yeah, and we know that you're not a big fan of the meal pot roast. You don't eat it too often. You only had it a couple of times, isn't that right? Right, two times. But uh, it's pretty good though. It's it's something you know I'll add to you know my menu. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, this one is a fan question. And I love the way it's worded, and so I will keep I will, I will keep the wording exactly how it is. What will you say to Russ Wilson after you sack him? Um, I can't say that on there. I can't say it, but uh, <laughs> that's fair. But um, I'll probably say something, you know, along the lines of uh, you know, just get used to being down there, or, you know, something like that. Like I said before, you know, uh, told the media all week, you know, he he's. You know, he's at the top of the menu for the whole D-line, and um, it's always like that with any quarterback. So, um, you know, him and Marshawn Lynch are fighting for number one right now. So, Yeah. I, I like the way the question was worded because it said when you sack Russ Wilson, not if. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, plan, I plan on getting to him. So There you go. Very nice. Uh, how are you mentally preparing for this game, this Super Bowl against the Seahawks? Uh, just doing as much studying as I can, uh, watching the guy I'm going against. Uh you know, watch the games, you know, all their games, their preseason games, um, just just watching all the tendencies and watching a lot of film. You know, we're in our rooms a lot. You know, we get in early. So, uh, you know, we just have a lot of time to get on our iPads, get in our playbooks, and um, just study as much as we can. But um, you try not to, you know, overdo it and, uh, you know, rest your mind a little bit and, you know, just, you know, try to enjoy the week and being in New York. Very nice. This question from a fan comes from Bjorn Braun. Uh, Mr. Knighton, where can I buy such a great jacket you're wearing? It looks great. I agree. Um, that, that is a sharp jacket. I have no idea where they can buy it. Um, they were in our lockers when we got to practice. And, um, you know, maybe they'll sell them at, you know, on NFL.com or, you know, a team store or something like that. But, uh, yeah, this, this one's not for sale. So, you know, <laughs> you know we, don't, we don't get much. A lot of times, you know, people think, you know, we just get a whole bunch of stuff for free, but we actually don't. They give us like one thing, and you know, uh, you know we try we try to hang on. Yeah. Uh, we know at Mile High Report you've been wearing Google Glass 
uh, all week for over a week. Uh, we embedded some of those things here and you know got a lot of good feedback on our site. Uh, what's been your experience with Google Glass? Um, I'm having fun with it. I'm just you know enjoying being around the team with them. You know everybody wants to try them out and um, you know I'm I'm a I'm a tech guy so you know I like to you know play with a lot of gadgets and things. Um, you know I do the same thing at home when I'm in my apartment. So uh, you know I'm just I'm just happy to you know experience something new. You've had some teammates using it too. Any cool stories to share with their Google Glass experience, or any cool story from your experience? Um, well, Von Miller, you know, he got in last night and you know he tried them out this morning. He's a tech guy too, and uh, you know he he tried to like take them and you know he had them for like an hour or two and tried to you know a lot of my teammates are asking can they buy them and things like that. But um, you know I'm holding on to them and I have to hide them when I'm not holding you know when I don't have them. So. Um, you know, everybody's looking forward to actually having them, really. Yeah. Yeah, I want one. So hold on to it, because I'm going to try to steal it after this. <laughs> uh, this question comes from David Neal. Who has been the most influential teammate you have had on the team? Um, I'm going to go with Sean Phillips. Um, you know, he's played a lot of football, even though he came from, he came from a new team, too. And, um, you know, he's played in the AFC Championship a few times, and this is his first time in the Super Bowl. And, uh... You know, he's a talkative guy. You know, he passes on a lot of knowledge. And, um, you know, every time he talk, every time, you know, he asks his questions, you know, I always pay attention and try to, you know, get a little bit from him. And um, it, it, it mostly Sean Phillips just because he, he plays defensive line and, you know, he's been in the trenches. Yeah, he was a great interview this week. I had a chance to talk to both you and he uh, at the different events this week, and he had a lot of good insight about his experience in Denver. You know, he came from the enemy Chargers from the Broncos right. country's perspective. Um, how has Jack Del Rio been in Denver? Has he been different as defensive coordinator as opposed to head coach? Not, not at all. I don't, I don't see a difference. I just see it as you know, he doesn't have as much, you know, responsibility, but um. You know, Jack Jack Daria, he's like an uncle, you know what I mean? He um you know, he he's great to be around. Um he's always in the locker room joking with the guys, but uh, when it's time to play, you know, he's focused and um you know, it, it's it's just good being around a coach that um you know, played the game and you know, know what we're going through and you know, he is, he works as hard enough and he knows his limits. Yeah. He was the perfect choice for interim head coach having been your head coach. I'm sure you agreed with that. Yeah, I mean, it, nothing really changed. He just let the offense do what they do, and it was just more so a title for him, and he had more of a voice. Nice. Um, this question comes from Scotty Payne, uh, one of our own staffers on Mile High Report. What was the craziest question you were asked on media day? Um, well, there was, like, these three, you know, older women. They had to be about in their 80s. And, uh, you know, they come up to me and they're like, do you like cougars? And I'm just like, uh, I got to be careful how I answer this. So, um, you know, I was just like, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, 80, you know, up there is kind of, you know, that's not quite cougar. But, uh, you know, I was just, I just answered that. I was like, I think cougars like me. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I dodged the question. That was a good answer to the question. I wonder yeah. if they I wonder if they asked everyone that question. Did you find out? Did any other teammates well, they actually they tried to come over there first and ask me could they meet Coach Fox and you know, do they think that uh, that he would like them and things like that. But um you know, I tried to I tried to give Coach Fox a shout out. I tried to send them over there to him and make him uncomfortable. <laughs> Uh, this question comes from Max Goldstein. Uh, Terrence, what has been your favorite part of the week so far? Um, the media, actually. Um, All right. Just just hanging out and, uh, you know, experiencing, you know, all the attention and, you know, being in New York and, you know, you know when, you know, you know when you're in New York that you're going to get a lot of media. It's probably like the media capital and you hear different type of questions, just all the attention and all the, you know, the fans and things like that, but I'm just having fun with everything. I want to throw a shout-out from uh, Bjorn Braun, who you answered his question earlier. He just wanted to say, as a big fan of you from Germany, I wish you all the best for Sunday, and God bless you, your fan, Bjorn Braun. So. Cool. Tell him thanks. Yeah, absolutely. You just did. He's, he's watching. This oh, okay, is, cool. Yeah, this is cool. This is Google Hangout. This is a, this is a lot of fun. Um, Darren Agawa wants to know, this is a good question, uh, and I know the media brushed on it a little bit, and but I think it's fun to hear it live.
Are you still there? I Hello? Yep. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, this one comes from Darren. Do you still play basketball during the season, and how often do you play point guard? Um, well, for one, whenever I play basketball, I play point guard. You know, I don't let guys just throw me in the post and, you know, never give me the ball because everybody wants to shoot. But um, no, I, I played a few times. Uh, I don't get too serious. I try not to get too serious, but um, usually I'll just shoot around. I won't really play pickup games just because of the risk of injury. But um, I love basketball, and I can't wait to play in the off season. And you know, that's part of my regimen, and you know, staying in shape in the off season. So uh, you know, I, that's one you know one of those sports I'll definitely keep playing. Yeah, I think Ryan Clady played basketball a few years back. So it's fun. Um, this question comes from Alan Meach, and he wants to know if you play Candy Crush. And I just want to follow <laughs> up with that and ask uh, <laughs> how you uh, kill time on these long travels. I mean, you, you're flying across the country to play games. What are some of the fun things you do when you've got time to kill? Um, I never played Candy Crush. I didn't get up in the, <laughs> I didn't get in the whole craze of it. But um, you know, I usually watch. I'm, I'm a movie person. I usually watch movies. Uh, you know, my favorite two movies are Shawshank Redemption and uh, Matilda. So uh, you know, I watch a lot of movies, but um, usually I'm on my iPad playing games. I usually play like NBA Jam or you know Sonic or something like that. But I didn't get caught up in the whole Candy Crush craze. I didn't quite understand it. Yeah, same here. A couple of people have asked this this question, so I'll, I'll throw it out for a couple of people. Uh, do you enjoy the nickname Pot Roast? If you could change it, would you change it? Well. You know, I tried to get rid of it, try to give Denver fans something new, something to play with when I first, you know, signed here. But um, it stuck with me. Uh, everybody's enjoying it. I don't mind it. Um, you know, it's funny because some people don't even know my real name. They just know me as Pot Rose. So uh, it's fun as long as the fans enjoy it and uh, people remember me by it. I'm cool with it. Uh, nice. Uh, Jeremy Halperin wants to know, who is the best dancer on the team? He also wishes you all the best. Go Broncos. Uh, Dominique Rogers Camardi. Um, he dances all day, all day. Um, I mean, in practice, in meetings. Um, you know, sometimes coach just has to take a break during meetings and just allow him to dance just to get his energy out. And uh, yeah, he's, he's dancing all day, so I have to go with DRC. Great, thanks. Well, with a possible new nickname in mind, we're going to introduce Laura in the own. Um, hi, Laura. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How's everybody doing? We're doing fantastic. We're hanging out, and we hear you have uh, something for Terrence. I can't believe that I actually have a pot roast here for you today, <laughs> which I thought it was hysterical. And I honestly want you to tell me where the nickname Pot Rose came from because I know you as Pot Rose but I don't think I've ever heard a story of how you got the nickname if you can right. believe that or not well we were coming back from Seattle coincidentally on a six hour flight headed back to Jacksonville my rookie year and um, you know it was dark on the plane everybody's sleeping and you know the ladies walking down the aisle like this saying Pot Rose Pot Rose you know I, I lean over into the aisle like right here right here and then, um, you know, my teammate behind me at the time, uh, Clint Ingram, was like the comedian on the team. And he was like, you know, you're saying that like that's your nickname and uh, I'm going to start calling you Pot Roast. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And, uh, you know, we're still talking about it five years later, so it stuck with me. But um, it was either that or Shrimp Alfredo, so <laughs> I'm glad I ordered Pot Roast because uh, I don't think Shrimp would have been a good name for me. So. I don't think so, but I like I, I like the pot roast. It's like a it's it's a real strong nickname, you know. Right. It's a it's a heavy meat. It's a, it's like the king of the braised meats. So I think it's a good <laughs> nickname. I definitely would prefer that over a shrimp. I right, agree. definitely. So yeah, I don't want to be called big shrimp or you know Alfredo or something. I, I'll stick with mm. pot roast. I agree. I totally mm. agree. Now, do you actually like pot roast? Oh. Uh, I like it now. Um, I had it two weeks ago for the first time since that flight. So uh, it was pretty good yeah. at a restaurant in Denver. And, uh, you know, they had different ways they cooked. They had the regular pot roast. They had pot roast egg rolls. And, you know, I took the D-line 
uh, out to eat and they enjoyed it. So um, yeah, it's, it's definitely something I'll try again. Nice. I mean, it's really it's a piece of meat that you braise. That's really all it is, and you can. There's so many different ways you can make it. It's crazy. Like today, I braised mine in like a really flavorful broth, and I'm gonna slice it, and I'm gonna put it on hoagie rolls with cheese on top, and then I'm gonna bake it, and then I'm gonna dip it like like au jus, like a French dip sandwich. That's what I'm gonna do with mine. So you can eat it like mashed potatoes with that, or you could. You're not helping with my hunger. I haven't had dinner. <laughs> You know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But if you were in my stadium, which is this <laughs> kitchen, <laughs> I would make you that sandwich. What's your stadium called? This, my stadium is just called Lar in the Kitchen. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's all that it's called. I have not. I haven't had a nickname for it yet, but I don't have a nickname. So maybe you can give me one. Maybe I can be like a lean chicken breast or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we can figure out something. We can figure out something. Sweet. Are you excited for this weekend? Uh, definitely. Um, I'm just trying to hold back right now because, you know, your emotions can wear you out and, you know, just thinking about it can wear you out. So um, I'm just trying to enjoy the week, enjoying all the, you know, festivities and all the, you know, the sights in New York. And, um, you know, when the game will come, I'll be ready. But, um, you know, a lot of my teammates were definitely ready to play and uh, we we can't wait. That's awesome. I'm, I'm, we're very, in the Vitali household, we are very proud, and we are going to be rooting you on on Sunday out of our own little stadium, and uh, hopefully you'll feel our vibes, uh, because I know you guys are going to do awesome. Cool, definitely. definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I can't, there we go. I was trying to see what your shirts, uh, your jacket that everybody was commenting on. Yeah. That's a really nice jacket. Yeah, they I'm, I got I got to keep away from my mom because she like takes everything, and I'm just like you know they they leave me with nothing so. Nice. I do the same thing to my parents and to my husband because I'm someone who really prefers the really heavy sweaters or the big jackets. It's just it might not look the most stylish thing on me, but it's very comfortable. Right. And I can't tell you how many times I've stolen my husband's like sweatpants and things like that. Just right. It's yeah. there. I'm feeling, the, I'm feeling the same thing here in New York too. I'm wearing like Super Bowl gear, and it, I've got I've got a hat that I bought at a at a lid store, and it's just got the Broncos logo and the Seahawks logo, and everybody wants this hat. People are gonna like rip it off our heads in the street. I'm serious. People have been like, hold on to that hat, and everybody wants it. That's crazy. It's, it's New York. Yeah, and I'm always asking my mom like, you know, why do you want my hoodie? You can't fit a three X hoodie. You know what I mean, and she's just like, oh, I'm gonna sleep in there, or I. You know, and I'm just like. I need it to, you know, to actually wear. So it's, you know. But that's sweet. But that's sweet. She she wants to like sleep with you and and, and <laughs> you know she wants to feel you next to her. Right. I, that's I, I guess. That's really sweet. Terrence, we got another questions. Uh, more questions from the fans. Um, this is a great question. I got the same question, and it, it's getting upvoted like crazy. This person, uh, Eli Rivera. I heard Peyton is a prankster. Have you ever gotten Peyton? Have you been able to play a prank on Peyton? I haven't played a prank on him. He hasn't played a prank on me. But, um, you know, he he's a smart guy, so he knows not to play a prank on the biggest guy on the team. So, uh, you know, a lot, the guy that probably plays the most pranks on me is probably Vaughn Miller and Wesley Woodyard. They're probably – they, they get on my nerves. They get on my nerves. <laughs> Peyton usually messes with the offensive guys and the rookies and – um. You know, most of the time, most of the time he'll make the rookies feel uncomfortable, and then he'll look at us and laugh. But they they think he's serious. Yeah, we saw that uh, Peyton Manning got Orlando Franklin with a pie in the face, or mm -hmm. or he, he put someone up to it. And it's good yeah. stuff there. Oh, yeah, he uh, he messed with the offensive of guys a lot. <laughs> Um, somebody wants to know, this is Eric Anderson, it was surprising hearing you were a wide out in high school, a wide receiver. Uh, what was your favorite memory from high school? Um, just scoring touchdowns. Um, that's what everybody wanted to do in high school. And, um, you know, I tell my coaches all the time I can still catch the ball. You know, I want to score a touchdown. And, but, uh, you know, they're, they're not going to put me out there. I got, I got to show them some film or something. And, um, you know, hopefully I can find some so they have some trust in me. Maybe the Super Bowl. Maybe you're the secret weapon that the Denver's been saving all season. The pot roast. The pot roast is a secret weapon. <laughs> He's going to have himself a pot roast dinner, and that's going to give him all the energy he needs to score the big game and end it on a high note. That's that's the secret weapon. And, and to make a good pot roast, you need two things. 
a piece of meat, you <laughs> sear it, and you cook it for a long time. That's how you make a good pot roast. Doesn't get any easier than that. <laughs> I like my pot roasts over 300 pounds and in orange and blue <laughs> uniforms myself, though. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Absolutely. A, a good piece of pot roast would, would do the trick. It'll stick to the ribs, you know? Mm. It'll keep them going. This question comes from Turbo Days. Uh, you know, the readers of Mile High Report have become big fans of you, Terrence. Uh, we, we read about your taking over leadership in the locker room. They've also become big fans of Danny Trevathan, someone we don't think is getting enough credit. Uh, so he asks, I believe he's becoming a playmaker this season on defense. Would you agree? Absolutely. Um, you know, Danny's a smart player. Um, you know, he, he studies a lot of football. He's fast. Um, he hits hard. He plays with an attitude. And um, he has a chip on his shoulder. You know, uh, he feels like he's overlooked. Um, he doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, he definitely should have been a pro bowler this year. But, um, you know, it, it just adds fuel to his fire. And um, I love playing with them. And uh, we're, we're great friends off the field. We're always texting. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, I like to protect my linebackers. You know, I always have their back. So, um, you know, I have great relationships with them. You have their front. You eat up blockers so that they can <laughs> roam free. Yeah, just let them run free. And, I, you know, I talk to them all the time in practice, you know, um, you know, I, I got it. I just run and make the play. I hold, you know, I hold two guys, and you know, sometimes they'll come to me and you know, let me know. Well, uh, number sixty-five is like pushing me in the back, and I'll tell them I got them, and uh, I'll save a cheap shot for them during the game and get them back for them. Nice. Uh, Kaylee Wetzik wants to know what is your favorite place to go to dinner in Denver? Where can we find pot, pot roast? Um, I'm a steak and potato guy, so. Um, you know, it's either, you know, Fleming's or, you know, Ocean Prime or Del Frisco, something like that. Very nice. Um, will you continue to make videos on your YouTube channel in the future? Do these kind of Google Hangouts and show us some Google Glass experiences? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, during the off season I'm on vacation and, you know, hanging out with teammates, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, share some of my no personal life and being around families and things like that. And um, I, th I think it's fun. And, uh, you know, everybody's going to enjoy it. My family will probably enjoy it. So uh, I'll definitely keep updating it. Great. We've got a time for probably about two more questions from Broncos country. Get them in, guys. We've got a lot of questions here. So I'll choose some of the, the highest voted ones. Um, which players do you hang out with most often away from the team? That comes from Jacob Dearlove. Um, the D line. We all hang out together. We text each other every day. We joke on each other every day. We send pictures of like each other in high school and embarrassing pictures and things like that. But um, there's no particular person. Uh, you know, I've I've hung out with you know DBs a few times, but you know they're pretty boys, so we you know we stay away from mm -hmm. them. So uh, usually I'll stay with the D linemen, and uh, usually we travel all together. Really, we always go out to eat and things. Can, can I ask a fan question? Absolutely. I want to know who was your favorite player growing up. Like, who did you look up to that was, like, your, like, your man? Like, that you just, uh, you know, was, you know, that was everything you wanted to be? Uh, Reggie White. I feel like he was the best player to ever play the game on both sides of the ball, really. Um, you know, his impact off the field, you know, he was a mentor to a lot of young kids. You know, he was a religious person in the church, a great person. And, um, and you know, I just I try to, you know, model myself after him and, you know, watch how he played the game and watch his approach to the game. And you know, I have an autobiography on him. And I just try to I just try to do whatever I can to, you know, match myself up to him. That's amazing. That is excellent. I think you're doing well. I think I think you are following that footstep. Right. Just near Super Bowl now. We win the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and you know that'll be another achievement that you know he reached, and you know it'll be an honor. We're 48 hours away from kickoff now. That happened while we were on air. We became 48 hours away from the Super Bowl. Terrence, are you ready? Yeah. I mean, right now I'll probably have like a tear or two coming down my eyes, just you know, just so ready to play and just knowing how big of a game this is and. Just thinking about all the adversity I've been through, and you know, this since I can remember, you know, four or five years old, just wanting to play football and being in the Super Bowl. So, um, you know, all that crossed my mind before the game. Do you have like a pre-game ritual that that you do? Um, uh, not 
Nothing crazy. I, I try me. I try to relax the other guys in the locker room. Uh, you know, guys are gonna be uptight. You know, they'll be nervous, and I'm the guy that's joking and you know playing music and dancing and things like that. So uh, I just try to keep the environment calm and you know just make guys you know just make them feel like you know we prepare for this so much. There's nothing to worry about. All you gotta do is go out there and play. And with that, we, we probably should let you go, get out there and get to your pregame rituals. 48 hours away, Terrence Knighton, thank you so much on behalf of Broncos country. Everyone here was so excited to be able to hang out with you. That means the world to us. We know you've been so busy with Super Bowl week. Best of luck, and go Broncos. Good luck. Well, thanks for having me. And, you know, we're going to bring that trophy back to Denver. That's Definitely. right.